Uh, my name is Esther Letty. I am the Executive Director at the East Africa Venture Capital Association. Hi, I'm Jessica Colasso, and I'm an entrepreneur based in Nairobi, Kenya. I run an HR tech startup called Brave, and we create a, a workforce uh, planning app for large enterprise companies. Hi, my name's Sheena Rekindalia, and I'm the country director for the UK Kenya Tech Hub. That's an interesting question. Um, we should probably first start with the fact that the Kenya startup and early stage uh, ecosystem is pretty nascent. We are still in the early stages of it as, a, as an ecosystem. You know, really the startup ecosystem began to flourish and blossom, um, you know, possibly around a decade ago. Um, so, you know, only about what, 10 to 12 years worth of, you know, active um, activity within the ecosystem. The the early stage investment ecosystem, uh, I would say for the last uh, 10, 10 years has, has really grown in the last five years. Uh, back in 2010, when uh, we started the iHub, we didn't see a lot of uh, angel uh, investors. Uh, there were a couple of VCs coming in, but it was too early to invest in uh, tech companies or startups because they were just growing. And come 20, um, 2015, we saw, we actually saw a rise. And when I say we, the tech ecosystem actually saw a rise of uh, angel investors who are not brick and mortar uh, investors investing in tech startups. What I've seen over the last five, six, seven years is the ecosystem has started maturing. We are seeing a lot more kind of startups set up. Uh, a lot of these startups are actually kind of scaling. They're attracting capital, a lot of it from international markets. We're seeing a lot of hubs and players set up. So for example, in Kenya itself, there's over 50 hubs. Um, and what's interesting now over the years is before it was quite Nairobi focused, but now we're seeing kind of hubs set up outside um, of Nairobi. So we're seeing hubs in kind of major cities like, you know, Kisumu, Mombasa, um, Eldoret, but we're also seeing kind of, you know, further, further hubs along and a lot of them are consolid consolidating. So you no know, startups in logistics are also a key, key, key area of opportunity. Um, and lastly, you know, um, agriculture, which has been the backbone of Africa and you know Kenya alike, um, you know, in, initially has been you know, you know, investors and um, and entrepreneurs have found it difficult to navigate the agriculture sector just because, um, you know, farmers across Africa are very reliant on uh, you know rain and natural. Uh, features to be able to sort of like advance it as a as a sector, but we're seeing new technologies coming up, which is fantastic. And so the ag tech sector um, and various businesses that are in the agricultural value chain that are not, um, you know, predominantly focused on um, rain as a source of, um, you know, decision making um, in the business, um, you've seen that as a as a sector of opportunity here. I think COVID has created, um, you know, sort of obviously, you know, huge losses in terms of economic pro productivity, health, but it's also created an opportunity. And I think looking at those areas, so for example, education, like that's, I think, an area that's never going to go back to being the same. So what are the kind of interesting business models um, for that? We're looking at agriculture, as I mentioned, we're looking at the health sector. I mean, I think those are the kind of areas um, that we do need to start looking forward as opportunities. Um, logistics, cold, um, cold, um, cold storage. So I think looking at the pandemic to see where, you know, where, where are the opportunities that have come up as a result of that is, uh, is, a, good, is a good bet for investors. Uh, I'm in, in the space of future of work and we see a lot of platforms, marketplaces, for example, uh, whereby uh, you can connect the gig worker who, to a person who actually needs uh, work done. So among these verticals, there's so many, there's healthcare, um, and, and the list is endless, logistics, e-commerce platforms. Over the last couple of months, a lot of logistics uh, firms have had to change their business model. You can get your grocery, groceries delivered uh, at, your, uh, at your doorstep. Ten years ago, this wasn't uh, the case, but now you can actually do that. Uh, in Kenya. So I think um, looking at the unique opportunities, there's a market opportunity, there's a business model opp opportunity and the value add opportunity. 
So we've moved, you know, from grants. We're seeing uh, both debt and equity um, instruments being introduced um, at the seed level. Uh, we've seen um, angel investors starting to crop up um, slowly. Um, we're seeing crowdfunding platforms coming in to play. Um, uh, not too many, just a few homegrown crowdfunding platforms. But you know, it's, it's like I said, it's still an asset market, so these things are you know slowly growing um, and filling these gaps. Um, we have venture capital um, and private equity. Uh, venture capital, you know, that role of venture capital was played by impact investors for, for the longest times, but now we're seeing more commercial venture capital players coming into the market. Uh, and so I think we have the full spectrum of capital. If you kind of look at the gaps and look at it as what are the gaps in the market, I think agri-tech is a huge area. So, for example, um, what COVID has shown is there's a real need for Kenya, for Africa to be able to feed itself, to potentially be able to feed the world. So I'm seeing a lot of kind of interest in agriculture. Um, and it's more and it doesn't even have to be sort of the innovation and technology, but also kind of, you know, the, the enabling elements. So is it kind of the logistics part, linking agro processes to raw materials, um, et cetera. So really looking through the value chain and understanding where the gaps are. So, you know, local investors have been slow to buy into the startup scene. Um, and the reasons they cite, you know, is that there's lack of notable success stories um, and a general caution in investing. Um, in often untested entrepreneurs, which is interesting because angel investors across the world are, you know, that is the role they play. You, you invest in untested entrepreneurs, you take that risk. So there isn't enough risk capital playing in the market here in Kenya. Um, you know, and those who call themselves <laughs> risk capital providers aren't really taking true risk because you'll find that they invest uh, much later in, in, in the business um, after various uh, you know uh, things have been proven you know the business model has been proven and you know they have um, established themselves um, in the industry one success i like to talk about is uh, um, um, it was a young startup i would say they were probably in the logistics space uh, whereby uh, they were called weather tele and they were create, helping um, the underserved to create inventory and provide a proper inventory system for them and eventually looking at what their bottom line was. And they were called uh, Wezatele. And they met their investor, their first investor at uh, the IHUB over, over coffee. And, uh, and this is uh, Honorable Joe Musharu. He invested in that startup and... Uh, about uh, four years later, the startup got acquired by uh, AFDB, now Jumo, uh, Mauritius-based, uh, South African-based company. So, and there are more stories like this. What we need is uh, more local uh, investors to actually join forces with uh, angels who have already done this before. Uh, so they actually... Uh, kind of have what's called a shared risk. So more syndicates like uh, uh, Sh Sherpa Ventures uh, would be very, very relevant. Uh -huh.